Hello everyone. So yesterday was WWDC 2022 day one. And uh, with that, iOS and iPadOS 16 has been announced. And uh, one confusing thing to a lot of people was that they dropped support for the iPhone 6S and iPhone 7, but uh, kept support for um, iPads, which use the exact same processors as those. And this is the oldest iPad that is now officially supported by iOS 16, an iPad 5 from 2017. So yeah, here you can see on Mac Tracker the uh, specs of this thing. Um, this is a A9 processor, which is the same as the iPhone uh, 6S, same amount of RAM as well. Um, so, you know, it's basically identical, obviously. The only difference is that it's way bigger. Um, so that's a little confusing to a lot of people why they decided to uh, continue uh, supporting this guy uh, and the two subsequent generations of iPads that followed it um, while not uh, supporting the same iPhones. But the question that I know a lot of people are wondering is how exactly is this new software going to perform on this old iPad, especially considering that now um, there is no iPhone with the same chipset that uh, is also supported. So I have uh, iOS 16 beta 1 installed on this and I've had it uh, for about a day. And honestly, I've got to say it's been pretty seamless. Um, it really doesn't feel that slow compared to iOS 15 so far, at least in this first beta. Um, you know, things could get better, things could get worse. Uh, nobody really knows for sure. Um, but really I've had no um, major usability issues with this. And honestly, for something that uses a now seven-year-old processor and is now a five-year-old iPad, uh, and you know, the cheapest iPad they made at the time, it's been holding up really well. So, you know, I'm just launching a couple apps here. You can kind of see how that performs in the real world. There's YouTube loading up. You know, I can open up Safari. And, you know, honestly, it's really not uh, that bad of an experience. Not, you know, noticeably worse than iOS uh, 15, at least I can say. So there are a couple new features in this version. Um, the major one that actually did not get ported to the iPad is the new lock screen on the iPhone. Um, they had the whole presentation with all the different styles and uh, clock font and stuff like that. Um, as far as I can tell, unless I'm understanding this wrong, uh, the iPad just does not get that. And I've looked through the feature list on the Apple website and on the iPad, it just does not mention the lock screen at all. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna be an iPhone exclusive feature, at least for this year. The one thing you do that get though is a slightly different font. The clock is bolder, so it's a little bit more legible. So that's nice, I guess. And the other important thing is, finally, the iPad actually has a weather app. Um, so, you know, we only waited 12 years for it, but here it is, and I think it looks pretty nice. Um, obviously the layout is slightly different from the iPhone because of the bigger screen. So you get a little bit more. Uh, I can show you, here's another city with some different conditions. Um, but yeah, that is new. And the other new app in this is uh, Apple Fitness. Now on the iPhone, um, the new feature they showed off is that it can actually give you a move goal, kind of like an uh, Apple Watch, and it just uses the iPhone to track that. But uh, not really, uh, not so on the iPad. It's just kind of an uh, advertisement for Apple Fitness Plus as it is. So you don't really get any uh, additional functionality with that, but uh, you know, it's kind of nice that it exists, I guess. Now the other headlining feature they showed off was the um, new multitasking feature and the ability to use an external monitor and actually finally have support the full resolution of the monitor. Now that is a feature that is exclusive to the M1 powered iPads. That means the iPad Pro that came out in last year and the new iPad Air as well and basically nothing else. So if you bought the 2020 iPad Air, you know, a little bit over a year ago, then you're kind of screwed on that front but you know, what can you do? In terms of multitasking features that you do get on this guy, um, it's basically the same as it was in iOS 15. So you have this little uh, breadcrumb at the top here, and then I can uh, pull up another app here on the side. And that's kind of how that works. So that's basically the uh, same experience as you had before, and you can uh, resize the other app. It's still a little bit uh, wonky, but uh, yeah. That's how that works on the iPad at the moment, at least the iPad 5. 
So yeah, that's just a little bit of a quick overview of the performance on this guy. It's really not that bad. You know, I can pull up, there's me. So this is a Plex, obviously it's gonna take a little bit to load um, because it's more of a heavy app, but this is about how it was performing before. So um, really, there's another app. So yeah. Most of the animations are still pretty fluid. Um, there's the control center. Has a little bit of a delay, same with the app switcher. But really, you know, what can you expect? And especially because this is the slowest supported device still, um, you know, I'll cut it a little bit of slack, but this is still a perfectly good uh, usable uh, experience on this guy. So yeah, that's just a little bit of an overview of the performance on this. Really nothing game changing at the moment, and I will make an update when the final version is released. But uh, that's it for today, so thank you for watching.